Okay, so let me open up some screens here so I can know uh, where we were. Ralph Macchio. Oh, crap. I just closed my iPad. I don't even know why I did that. Like, yep, we're done. Okay, close it up. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's got oh, a decent awesome. picture on uh, IMDb. Ralph. He's a very good picture, but he doesn't age either, so, like, really? Dorian Gray? I don't think so. Yeah, exactly, right? There's got to be some pictures somewhere. <laughs> uh, the closet in an attic. This is, uh, yeah. You got to wonder who picks some of these pictures for IMDb. Yeah, exactly. Because some of them really, you're like, really? Wouldn't you pick a, like one that's a you little know bit. What? Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just okay. better uh, overall? I mean, even more up to date? I mean, because some of them are like, I've seen a couple on there that are like selfies, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? No, you know I mean, when there's, they really, the best... there's some really bad ones up there. Uh, when I was looking at the, where did I, where was that? Oh, that was I looked up the actresses of the '80s because we were trying to come mm. up with different actresses, and one of the girls on there, oh, Justine Bateman. It's like she's oh. laying, on, she's got sunglasses on, laying on a beach towel, and she's got a selfie of her doing a selfie, and that was like on the list. I didn't click on her actual uh, picture or well, her link to see what she what it looks like if uh, if that's her actual picture on the IMDb. But it was a link through IMDb to get to her page, so I can only imagine that that's what it was. <laughs> Which don't is, do yeah. it. Don't I, do it, Justine I, Bateman. I just no. brought it up. Oh, you guys! You never listen to me. No, I. So you yeah, blind it for the rest of your life. Okay. She's got sunglasses on and yeah, it's it like looks, a yeah, like she's laying on a blanket or a towel or something. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Why would you pick that for an IMDb <laughs> photo? I don't know. Who's your press person? Yeah, I know. Maybe she doesn't have one. <laughs> well, the way her career's been. Hmm. Okay, let's yeah. stop yeah, We're recording this. We shouldn't, re- we shouldn't talk bad about people. Shh. Not at all. No, no. No. And you know what? What I was going to say, and I'm just going to lay this out there because I can. You know when they put the best picture up of you on mm. IMDb, and I've noticed this, and this sounds horrible. After you die, there is like, I don't know, they go into the Hollywood archives and they find the most pristine picture of you ever from the height of your career and they plant it right there. So you go, wow, really? Hmm. When did you look like that? <laughs> oh, I got it. When you first started in your movie career. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. we were just talking about Patrick Swayze and yeah, that's is not good. Yeah. His wasn't yeah. like that. No. And that's why I'm pissed because it's like whoever did that, you know, needs to be fired. I almost, I'm tempted to go in there. And uh, change it myself. Tell me you have access to change IMDb. That'd you be know, awesome. <laughs> it though? Wow. Can you imagine the havoc I could wreak? Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave. I just happened to see a, a link over on the side of IMDb and it said guilty pleasures. Uh-oh. Guess what number seven is? Uh, is it Howard? It is Howard the Duck. Sweet. That is a conversation just waiting to happen. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pauly Shore, Pauly Shore makes the mo- makes that list like three times. Oh hell yeah! The weasel. <laughs> it was up. <laughs> oh boy. Or Polly Polly. Yeah, that was actually a movie that he was in that I enjoyed. Uh, it's called In the Army Now. That's on the list. That yeah, was I, actually a fairly good movie, I have to admit. Yeah, I actually like that okay, one a lot. Okay, let's say good, as in, like, you know, award-winning, oh, or minor no. league, razzy even, but it, it was humorous. It was definitely humorous. I liked it. Oh, number 33, Soul Man. <laughs> Where are you finding these? Uh, I don't know. I just it was uh, one of the links on the sidebar of IMDb. Oh. It said guilty pleasures, like thirty five movies, and um, oh, like at yeah, the beginning some... on the homepage. 
Uh, I don't remember where exactly. I just I clicked on it when we were looking through some of the other. Uh-huh. When we were going through some of the other stuff, it just I found it and just. I can't. I don't know how. Wait a minute. I know. How. Nope. I can't do that either because I was going to go back a page, but I can't because I opened it in a new link because I don't want to lose what I'm looking at. Okay. All right. Never you mind. Know. So I can't. We'll just make I don't... You, you'll just make you read us the whole list. Okay. Maximum Overdrive. Biodome. Ernest Goes to Jail. <laughs> License to Drive. Do- Drop Dead Fred. Masters of the Universe. Howard the Duck. Suburban Commando. With Hulk Hogan. (laughs) (laughs) And Hulk Hogan again at number nine. No holds barred. (laughs) Uh, Shaquille O'Neal with Steel at number 10. Uh, Encino Man. There's your Pauly Shore. Whoa, 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 whoa. People actually watched that movie, Steel? Apparently it's a guilty pleasure at 2.7 stars, too. Interesting. All right. Encino Man. Do you guys want me to go on? Just for fun. Is there, any, is there any 80s movies? Uh, I uh, believe. <laughs> let's see. Other than Howard. 2000, 2000. Boy, the 90s were bad. <laughs> oh, here we go. Still smoking Cheech and Chong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a given. Let's see. All the others are like nine, 90s and 2000s. 94 had some doozies. Woof. Yeah, run, run those off. That was a stellar year. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. 94, Double Dragon. Okay. Okay. The game, the you know, video game yeah, turn yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, ni- well, no, I, miss, I'm, I misspoke. It's not all 94. 93, 95. You got Showgirls, 95. You got <laughs> Se- Senior Trip, 95, and National Lampoon. Uh, Loaded Weapon 1. Oh, come on. With Emilio. Emilio. <laughs> okay, so so what? That was a classic. That was 93. So, 93. So, so in Rose's book, that is not a guilty pleasure. That's a classic. <laughs> right? That's true. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Lord. I'm listening oh. to you. Okay. Yeah, here All we right. go. Back. I'm down to 33, Soul Man. So, so the, there's only like three movies of the 80s that actually made it in. Three or four. Not, Most of them are in the 90s. That does not surprise me. 89 was No Holds Barred with mm. Hulk Hogan and... Who's the other guy? Tommy Lister? Yeah, whoever that is. See, I, I agree with this list because it's called A Guilty Pleasure. So that's why I feel Howard doesn't get enough credit. Because it's you know it, it it's probably akin to what Scott does with the holiday special for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You know, watch it every year. Yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> Actually, I was wrong. Maximum Overdrive is number one, so that's eighty six. There's more than than I thought. Eighty eight mm-hmm. License to Drive yeah. with with the Corys. So, I love that movie. License to Drive. Absolutely. You, really, you love that movie. I do. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I I, I wouldn't ca- classify it as a love movie, but I mean, I like it. Hmm. How about Masters yeah. of the Universe, 1987? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What was that? <laughs> was that a raspberry? raspberry? Was that a Raspberry by Rose? <laughs> I, I I almost want to say when we did that year. Uh, for movies of that year, uh, that Nick was a fan of that movie. Yes, I believe he did pick that movie. Yeah, yeah, that was one I of his top three. On the list. Yep. Well, there you go. Maximum Overdrive. Just so I get a clarification, is that the Emilio Estevez truck one by Stephen? That King? is also yes. yeah. So that's yes. two. Emilio made okay. the list twice. Thank you. Yeah, that's the uh, um, directed. Three full man's not on there. Directed by Stephen King. Yeah, directed by Stephen King, and then that may have been the issue with it. Who knows? Repo Man's not on there because that actually was a good movie. See? There you go. So there's a couple of them on there that don't need to be there, but that's okay. Like okay. Howard. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear me, I but I just rolled my eyes. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> 
but nowhere <laughs> in this list did the holiday special come up. It's because nobody knows it exists, but <laughs> okay. No one else likes and the fact it. That you watch that travesty every year just really kind of makes me go, do I want to go down south and visit Scott? Probably not. <laughs> Especially around Christmas time, because you know what you're going to get. Probably got like red and green alligators hanging on his wall or something. Uh, no, but we. Oh no, we don't have flamingos dressed like Santa. We have uh, we have flamingos. <laughs> We have we have zombie flamingos for Halloween though. Nice. Oh, yeah. God, red and green flamingo. That'd be awesome. Dress Santa. Wow, that's the trend. Don't tell my is. don't tell my wife about that. She might get them. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> this is being recorded. So. Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> What's got hey, like? <laughs> I might I might have actually talked Chrissy into doing a podcast with me. Uh oh. That'd be awesome. Yeah, with Jesse, we're going to do a Tom Petty special. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Tom Petty. Awesome. He follows yeah, me on Twitter. That's. Ooh, yeah. Are you serious? Very serious. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Free Very falling. Cool. Are you a big fan? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a middle of the road fan. Okay. I loved him in Travel Wilburys. Ah, okay. Yeah, my wife is a my, huge fan. That's like her favorite. Love. She's got, you know, uh, satellite radio has Tom Petty, a Tom Petty station, you know, That's cool. like, like Bruce's Bruce Springsteen I station. I, I yeah. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> All right. Should we move on? Should we move on to uh, Ralph? I, I, yes, we probably should. Please. Let's give Ralph his due. He's done so many wonderful movies. Yep. Well, we've already got 13 minutes of uh, just random talk in, in the can. Yeah. <laughs> random BS talk. Well, we haven't been together for like a whole month and a half. Is this true? This is true. We need to catch up. So. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to write a blog. So what I did on my summer vacation. Seriously. Cool. I do one every year. No, I don't. I'm lying. Um, <laughs> I think about doing one every year. And then I go, nah, because, you know, the nuance kind of leaves after October. So and I'm a bit of a procrastinator. Yeah. <laughs> In case you didn't know that. I am totally. All right. I just got texted by the wife. <gasps> oh, hold on. Hello. Let's see what's going on. OK, well, actually, she's out and about. So Boop. she had Fiesta days. Um. McHenry has a fest that they went to, but then they went over to Cheryl's. Oh, okay. Cool. And they're going to be Ubering, so that means they drank a little too much. Good Uh-oh. for them. <laughs> Jeez, guys, I am like... All the, way from, all the way from Cheryl's house to your house? I, well, I'm, I'm sure she's going to be driving back from Cheryl's house, but I'm just oh, saying sure. from McHenry Fest, so... Okay, yeah, that's a little bit of a drive. Down 31 there. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, she could walk to your house from their house. Well, this is true. And, and um, over there by that big park there, I don't know if you remember that or not, but yeah, that is a... Fort something or other? Fort. Yeah, Timbertown. Timbertown. Yeah, that's a uh, Pokemon Go site. So oh, my you goodness. Can, you can actually stay there with your phone and... <laughs> don't start on yeah. the Pokemon thing. I don't, I'm not getting it. I'm not doing it. I'm not trying it. I'm the same way. I did have somebody say uh, she works at a, a doctor's office or something that a patient mm-hmm. came in that was playing. And she was like, uh, the patient is about 50 and she's playing Pokemon Go and walked into a telephone pole and nearly tore her toenail off. Ouch. Because uh, she was looking at her phone, not looking at where she was walking. <laughs> <Good God. laughs> That's funny. Um. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're Ralph. Probably, let, let's how about get a, Ralph. How about Ralph? Let's you know get what? You guys are like all reminiscing and walking down memory lane. I'm, you know, totally feeling like an outsider here. Sorry, I was just there. I was just I there. Easily, I could have easily weeks. been in the movie. Yeah, two weeks ago, I was just there. Oh, you're what? An outsider? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Rose. Oh no, that's fine. No. It's okay. Virtual, and you know what? Virtual hug reference. 
Good reference. Thank you. Nice. Another pun. Well, I know. I'm, I'm good for him. Don't come um, to me when your foot falls off. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sounds like something my mom said. All right. So Ralph Macchio. Ralph Macchio. <laughs> 733. For the Romans, give me sight beyond sight. Read Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. This is 80's Reboot Overdrive Podcast. Is like so dated. You know what? 80s Reboot Overdrive. I am Dave. Online, I've got 80s Music Girl. Rose. He's bald. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what did you say, Rose? <laughs> you proud to be bald? Is that what I heard? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, start over again. Now you went on with the whole bald thing. <laughs> and then it's just like you should be involved in that, and it's just like, and I said he's bald. So, I am bald, yes. Okay, all right. Let's just sorry. Let's do that again. <laughs> oh, you mean I've got to do my intro again? Yes. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Someone else lead. Oh no, you're you're it. You're the Come boss. Come on, man. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to 80s Reboot Overdrive, and Scott has his radio pipes back on again. I'm Scott, and with me tonight is Dave. Hey, how you doing? And Rose. Hi, everybody. Great. Good to see you. Well, let me start off by saying what we're doing is we're we're talking more outsiders, obviously, with Ralph Macchio. And he played Johnny, and so we're going to go through his... His filmography of the 80s, and uh, in 1980, he was in Up the Academy, and 1980, 81, he was in, looks like about six or seven episodes, uh, oh no, 19 episodes of Eight is Enough, which I did not know about that. Uh, 1982, Dangerous Company, 1982, CBS Afternoon Playhouse, 1982, High Powder, uh, 1983, The Outsiders. 1984, The Karate Kid. 1984, Teachers. 1984, again, The Three Wishes of Billy Greer. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1986, Crossroads. 1986, also, The Karate Kid Part Two. Very busy for like three, four years, right in a row there. Uh, 1988, Distant Thunder. And 1989, The Karate Kid Part Three. So that is our uh, list of Ralph Macchio movies. So why don't we start with Dave this time, since you're always leading. We're going to start with you uh, and your favorite uh, moment of Ralph Macchio or or role or however you want to look at it. You know, I, I feel bad not picking Karate Kid or Outsiders, but I always feel like I've got to leave that for you guys. Um, and, and, and so, but there was another one that I really liked. I like teachers, believe it or not. Okay. Did you guys, did you guys see that one? No, I was reading ah. about it though. I do remember yeah. seeing it. I don't remember it very well. I remember Nick Nolte being like the main character, one of the main characters in that yeah, one. Yeah. Nick Nolte, Judd Hirsch. Um, Joe Beth Williams too. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A great cast. Um, mm-hmm. and 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 what you got from Ralph Macchio was he was kind of the 
I'm a smart kid, but I don't really apply myself, kind of a tough edge about him. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of what he brought to the role. And he was, you know, the uh, the Nick Nolte character was reaching out to him to get him kind of more involved in class and have him showing up and because he saw potential in him. Yeah, you know, I just really liked that movie. I really liked kind of the uh, 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 the message of where you had this school that was obviously a substandard school and had some really eclectic teachers. And I think we've seen that theme before with other movies. Um, but, you know, to have Ralph Macchio as the, I want to say the tough guy, mm-hmm. you know, um, with kind of still caring, you know, to some degree mm-hmm. uh, uh, in that role. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing that for him. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the movie. I, I, it's been a long time. I do remember it having a, um, uh, you know, it had a feel-good type of ending. You know, it had um, Ralph, probably his character probably succeeding, if I recall, or you know, coming around and being the better student that he that he could have been from being the tough guy, you know. Yeah, and so. and there was a scene uh, towards the end uh, where, uh, well, actually, it was kind of mid movie where um, the uh, Nick Nolte character he tells the students he says, you know what, what I want you to do is everybody's always complaining, but I want you to tell me what's wrong with this school, and. Ralph Macchio's character decides that he's going to, unfortunately, steals a camera from the the school photography group, and then he ends up going around taking pictures, and then he ends up doing a slideshow showing everything that's wrong with the school. And one of the pictures, of course, being the Nick Nolte character, which was kind of mm-hmm. funny. Um, but there was another character that always, uh, a teacher that he, they called him Ditto, where he passed out these Xerox copies and then everybody passed the, you know, the, the test forward or whatever it was that they're working on. They would work on this copy and then he would be sitting in the back just reading his paper, falling asleep. Um, mm-hmm. and of course he was walking around with his camera. He took a picture of that. So everybody got to see that picture of it. So it was really, mm-hmm. it was funny. Hmm. So cool. if, if you haven't seen it, I would in, I would recommend it. Yeah, it's been a long time. Probably when it first came out. Yeah. I mean, when it, so you wouldn't revisit that one, is what you're saying? Oh no, I might. Okay. If I if I can find it for you know for free, maybe on YouTube or something. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we should reapply like uh, uh, when we recommend movies to rewatch. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. we should apply like a dollar amount. <laughs> you know, so, so, so I'd, so, I'd pay three dollars to see that. <laughs> so, so, so maybe teachers is around the realm of no more than maybe two dollars. <laughs> not maybe. your best movie in the world, but not a bad movie. So it's worth some money. I'd pay a cool fifty cents for that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, did you have anything, any input on teachers? No, because I never saw it. Okay. Yeah, but it looks like something I wouldn't mind watching. But I wouldn't pay more than three bucks for it. So there you go. I was, I was in line with the two dollars. So Rose, yeah, what's yeah. Your, what is your take? What, where where do you stand with Ralph in the eighties? What's your favorite guy? Time, character, line, whatever. Okay. Um. <laughs> go with it. Uh, Run. Yeah. yeah Run well, with it. I'm running. It's a toss-up between Karate Kid and the Outsiders. Uh, Daniel from Karate Kid, he's, you know, that's the whole total fish-out-of-water scenario. And, uh, of course, he, you know, whenever you're a kid and you move, you have to move, you know, it's always one of those things where it's like the scariest part, but it's exciting, too, because it's, you know, a new place and new friends and new... But it was just like craptastic from like day one. Um, but he was doing it for his mom, so you know, totally understood that. He just never really got along with anybody at school, and then of course he missed meets Mr. Miyagi, and you know, it pretty much changes his life forever. And and he just you kind of see like who he is 
you know, and who he becomes all all in the same movie, you know, and you don't necessarily get to see that all the time, you know, and he ends up having a lot of courage and strength that he really didn't realize he had, you know, so that's actually a really good kind of coming of age movie, not in the realm that people say, oh, it's this a really good coming of age movie, only because he, you know, learns more about himself than, you know, he thought he knew. And he learns more about, you know, his own situation with his family and everything. And um, so that was actually, I could see how they managed to keep that as a franchise for mm-hmm. three movies. And even later on, they ended up, you know, expanded even further. But we won't talk about that. Probably his most memorable memorable role for me was definitely in The Outsiders. And he was like, probably, you know, he's like more wrong side of the tracks and than most only because of his financial situation and um yeah underprivileged yeah he's um, underprivileged thank you Mm -hmm. and he you know had a really good friend in um pony boy pony boy and uh it was just really even if the movie was just about those two you know it still would have been great i mean of course you had to throw all the other added characters in there but it just was so you know, it just shows you go goes to show you what friendship can really do for a soul. And uh, he was very devoted, and you know, because he knew he came from nothing and he had nothing, but that doesn't mean he was nothing. Mm. I think the, think the outsiders needed Matt Dillon though. Got to do it for Johnny, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was really good. <laughs> that was, that was that pretty was, good. That was pretty good. <laughs> Matt Dillon, and I just you know. I'm all choked up. No, um, <laughs> no I like Bad Dylan. I I just you know I don't care what movie you know you say he's in. He plays the same character all the time. I really don't care. But we'll get to him. I want to so, go yeah. back to Karate Kid for a minute. Now, okay. uh, memorable lines. I mean, everyone else. I mean, we all remember like Miyagi. We remember his lines. We remember sweep the leg, Johnny. Do you remember, like, is there any memorable lines from Daniel? I got one. Let's hear it. When he he takes his bike and he throws it in the garbage can, he says, stupid bike, because he's playing <laughs> with the bike. That's the, only, that's the only thing that I can think of. <laughs> uh, stupid bike. But it's like everyone else gets a memorable line and stuff that sticks with you. But, you yeah. know, you're – is it Daniel's line? And I don't think so. I can't think of one. I'm sure there is. I mean, I don't know. when was the last time you – I could tell you the last time I saw Karate Kid. Let's see. What year did it come out? 1984. Uh, 84. <laughs> yeah. That's 32 years ago. Yeah. I would, I would I'd, watch that one again. Yeah. I would, I would pay three bucks to watch that. Again. Three bucks? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> this is a good I like this scale that we're putting. Oh, I know. I know. This is great. I'm with you, Rose. That's a three dollar movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you can rent it on Amazon right now for two ninety nine. Two ninety nine? Yes. They agree with us. That's awesome. Yep. Good old Watch Amazon. now. Watch that, now from two ninety nine on Amazon Video. That almost sounds like an eighties reboot commentary movie. Oh boy! Uh, oh, you, yeah, have you know, like sweep the lake, Johnny. <laughs> I know there's got to be there's got to be some lines, and if you watch the movie, I'm sure you're gonna f- remember like some of those lines of, that we can't recall right now, other than "stupid bike." See, it's like everything that you remember. Sweep the lake, Johnny. Um... You know, uh, wax on, wax off, wax on. Yeah, exactly. That's all. That's Miyagi. Mm-hmm. We we don't have yeah. anything that's really, you know, just Daniel. You know, I bet you if you Google quotes, Daniel quotes from Karate Kid, I bet you'd find something. Oh, well, I'm sure we would, but I'm just it's thinking saying. that the ones that stick with you are usually Miyagi quotes. Yeah, they are because well. Well, he was the wise the teacher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, you not only get a Pat Morita, you know, once in a lifetime. 
God rest his soul. Yeah, Pat Morita was awesome. He was. I did, he I was did. having a great Arnold. Oh, yeah. Awesome Arnold. Yep. We we actually had a uh, great conversation on GammaCast talking about him because he was on an episode of uh, The Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like very memorable. Yeah. He's He's, he's got a great delivery with his lines. Yeah, definitely. You don't find that anymore. Well, not too much. All right, so, Scott, you need to tell us your favorite Ralph moment. Uh, being the music guy that I am, I absolutely mm-hmm. love Crossroads. Just the whole movie. It's Jamie Gertz. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, one of my favorite guitarists, Steve Vai, is in there at the end of the movie, <gasps> nice. too. But it's about, you know, this kid that wants to play the blues, but he's been taught classical guitar for all these, you know, from his parents. And every once in a while during his classical class, he'll rip into a little blues riff. And, and it's just really, I just thought, I thought that was kind of fun. Then his his uh, his desire to just run and go and chase the blues the way he wanted to play, you know, and it, it ends up being the... Uh, the you know sell your soul to the devil type of of movie to where you'll get mm-hmm. success then but uh i just i it's one of my favorites i love watching it i've watched it many many times over and uh it's just it's like his his role as the character i thought he did really well because he seemed like you know the nice reserve kind of person but had this in him that he wanted to chase this dream that he wanted to chase so i think it was it was just well done so um, it's hard to choose that over Johnny in The Outsiders just for the single line that he has in The Outsiders that uh, sticks out. Uh, mm-hmm. Stay gold, go- stay gold, pony boy. Uh, I <laughs> I had somebody say that to me randomly one time. I mean, I just about died. It was just the the best thing. It was just stay gold, pony boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. So, um, you know, his role in the outsiders, I, you know, that's obviously the the uh, catalyst that really put him out there uh, as that probably gave him the opportunity to be the karate kid. You know, his previous acting, I'm sure he's got quite a few, you know, he's quite a, had quite a bit under his belt. Under his black belt. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't too funny. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but then again, coming from the person who loves the holiday special. This is true. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm, that's Crossroads is my uh, my pick for for my favorite uh, Ralph Macchio movie. You know, I've seen this movie probably once, mm-hmm. and I don't remember much of it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a uh, like a, a sleeper, you know, kind of a hidden gem. Not a lot of people know about it. I think a lot of people appreciate it for the the guitar work that's in it. And I can't remember who actually plays the guitar for Ralph Macchio because he he's a very good guitarist. He's done a lot of stuff. I cannot remember remember his name right now. I have to look deeper into the uh, IMDb for his credits. Right, but Peter, maybe what is it? Ry Cooter? No, that's um, I don't think so. Okay, think that's, that's one of the actors, isn't it? Uh, Ry Cooter actually is a um, the blues. Well, maybe he played the blues part of. Well, he did Crossroads. Him and Terry Evans both did Crossroads, and it was written by Robert Johnson. So. Ah, I see. Okay. It pays anyway. to scroll. But the uh, the actor that played what is uh, teacher Willie Brown, Joe yeah. Seneca, mm-hmm. um, I remember him most from uh, A Time to Kill. Oh right, oh, yeah, yeah, really liked him in that. Yeah. But but looking at the uh, the IMDb IMDb credits, I just like you know, I remember that guy definitely, Joe Seneca. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a good character actor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you want to run through a few more of these movies real quick? Let's see. Just a quick, quick run over. Like uh, Karate Kid 2. Why wasn't Elizabeth Shue in Karate Kid 2? That is <laughs> an uh, excellent question, right? Yeah. What movie was oh, she in? Oh, that's because he was, she was in Karate Kid 1, the first yeah. one. 
<laughs> and then in Karate Kid 2, uh, went to Japan, right? Okinawa. Now, wait, we have to go back to Karate Kid for a second. That had the one of the best bullies in all of movie history. Of course. Yes. And he was, awesome. he was. Johnny. Who was? And he was, well, I can't remember the actor's name right now. He was a Van Patten. William Zabka? No. Are we talking about the the one in the Johnny. first one or the second one? Yeah. No, the one in the first one. Johnny. Yeah, William what? Zabka. Okay. Yeah. What was the one, of the one Van Patten? The one I'm thinking of must be in the second one. No, yes? I don't think so. I think the Karate Kid 2 was in uh, Japan. It took place in right Okinawa. Japan. Oh, okay. Okinawa. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Karate Kid oh, 3, I don't that's... know if I saw that one. William Zabka. Why do I think he was? A Van Patten. He kind of has that Van Patten look to him. Did you guys see any of the other ones in between, like Distant Thunder or um, The Three Wishes of Billy Greer, the TV movie? I don't remember any of the, these at all. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. That's, yeah. That pretty much wraps it up. So, you know, he had a handful of really, really important uh, movies for his career, and that's the Outsiders, Karate Kid, mm. uh, you know, the Karate Kid series, really, and then Crossroads was my f- personal favorite. But uh, well, overall, good, good stuff. Ralph Macchio um, goes on to do, you know, a Too Bad 1992. Michael Vinny, another great, another mm-hmm. great one that he was in. Yep. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was trying to see if there's anything after My Cousin Vinny. Not really, no. Naked in New York. Uh, Beer League? Hmm. Oh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Oh, he was on Robot Chicken. And he was in an episode of Entourage. Ugly Betty. Now, I have seen him in the two episodes that he was in with uh, with Psych. On Psych, yeah. Yeah, when he was in a courtroom scene. <laughs> Played a lawyer. It was actually really good. Cool. And they referenced the movie My Cousin Benny. No way. Totally. And <laughs> no way. Said, yeah, funny. they did. And it was like Sean Spencer, this guy that played Sean Spencer. I can't remember his name right now, but he's like from the great movie. He's quoting that great movie, you know, My Cousin Benny. And Ralph Macchio goes, touch. It was okay. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but you can tell he was like, they did outtakes later and he just could not stop laughing. It was just like the one time that they could get him to stop laughing and he can actually do the line properly. And then they had to go with that. So. Huh. Yeah, my cousin Vinny was owned by Joe Pesci and Marissa Tomei. Well, didn't she yeah. win the award for that? Did she? I thought she did. Or was she just nominated? I thought she won the Oscar. I think she won the Oscar for that one. Once yeah. again, we got to go back and listen to the Oscar podcast. Okay. And that was with who does that? Uh, not Nick. Uh, no, no, that was Jesse and Matt. Jesse and Matt, yeah, Matt. Yeah, yeah I listened to a few of those. That's good stuff. It brings back memories. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, so final thoughts, Dave. I I think I've picked on him a little bit because I didn't remember any like memorable lines from Ralph Macchio from The Karate Kid. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you were to look at him from, you know, what he gave us with Outsiders mm-hmm. um, and, and a lot of what you guys are talking about, you know, he had this way that he personified the character where he wasn't well off. He wasn't mm-hmm. from the right side of the tracks. And he did that with Outsiders. He did that with Karate Kid and even with teachers, which you guys don't remember that much. But, I mean, this seemed to be the role that he was able to personify. And I think he did it really awesome. You know, I mean, I couldn't imagine a different Karate Kid. I couldn't imagine a different Johnny from The Outsiders. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what he brought to it. And so, you know, the, the 80s was great for what Ralph gave us. So I appreciate him. Okay, Rose, you got a final thought on that? Yeah. Um, all I'm saying is uh, there's an attic somewhere in a dusty old house that has the actual picture 
of Ralph Macchio. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> come on, that's a good, that's a really good picture of him. It is an excellent picture. I'm sorry, he's not 56 years old. There's no way in hell this man is 56 years old. Well, no, now think about it. He was like 20 when he did Karate Kid. Yeah. He, he looked a lot younger than he is. Okay. 20, 21. I mean, what, what, how old is he? He's 56? He's held up his age really yeah. well. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he's very that, cool. that, There's no way this is a recent picture. It's not. No. I mean, if you look at Willie Ames's picture, I mean, seriously. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. I found some lines from uh, the uh, Karate Kid from by Daniel. Well done. Let's hear it. Banzai! <laughs> <laughs> I thought it came from Buddhist temples and stuff like that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have, like, they didn't really give him good lines. Or how about this? No, the problem is I'm getting my ass kicked every other day. That's the problem. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. I just feel like that, you know, his interaction with Elizabeth Shue, that there should have been more memorable lines there. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading through this, and there's nothing with Elizabeth Shue's character. Which, what other movie was she in? I had a huge crush on her with that. Oh, cocktail. Adventures, Adventures in Babysitting. Okay, see. Honestly, I think that was kind of her crown and glory. Uh, babysitting? Adventures in Babysitting? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Either that or Cocktail. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to cocktail the... Cocktail uh... is no one crown and glory. <laughs> okay. the, 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 the Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's going to be good please. stuff. I want to walk through them all and smell booze. Yeah, <laughs> you do that. Come to Tacoma. I'm sure you won't even have to have any type of ventilation. You know, just <laughs> randomly walk up on somebody. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I am finding some quotes between Allie Mills was her name. Elizabeth Shue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, she had a last name? Mills? Mills yes. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's typical dialogue. It's nothing memorable. Yeah, nothing that like wow, that was a great one. Let's see. Okay. Like that was an actual line. Wax no. the car. Uh, admit that you just can't handle the situation the way it is. I mean, oh yeah, I'm from Reseda. You're from the hills. That's how we're different. Well, that makes sense to me. I, I get that. Southern California. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, there's it's just typical dialogue, right? I'm from simple dialogue. There's, uh, there's nothing memorable about it. Yeah, no. it's unfortunate. He just didn't get a, he didn't get the lines. I don't think it was his fault. No, not at all. It's I just think it's the way they wrote it. They wrote it. Yeah. To have uh, you know, Mr. Miyagi was the comic relief, basically. Well, that and you know they had to focus on his training. I mean, you yeah. know, the transformation. Is so. you know the outcome? Yeah, but even like you know the Cobra Kai guys, you know, mm-hmm. sweep the lake, Johnny. You know, I right. mean, people remember that. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what sticks with you from Karate Kid: sweep the lake, Johnny. You know, or you know, mercy is for the weak. You know, mm. you remember these lines. You remember, you know, uh, paint the fence. You know, wax mm-hmm. the car. You know, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, Daniel didn't have any of those lines. Even Hallie or Allie has or Elizabeth Shue has a line that's a little bit funny. You know, when they when they go to the tournament and mm-hmm. she she plays the role as the interpreter and she says, you know, Mr. Miyaga says something in Japanese and Allie says he says that uh, you remind him of an uncle back he has back in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, all right. <laughs> so that's about that, that. That about wraps it up for Mr. Machio, great yeah. '80s icon. Um, mm-hmm. Love doing these '80s icons. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot. We have a lot ahead of us with the '80s icons, guys. Especially just from the outsiders alone is going to be. Uh, they have such a cu- huge cast. So, um, do you want to? And, do- and and I think the outsiders thing is totally bleeding into. Well, it's going to bleed into Red Dawn. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, you've got, what, you got Patrick Swayze, 
C. Thomas Howell. Uh, well, Tra- Charlie Sheen wasn't in The Outsiders. Uh, I think that's about it from the Red Dawn. From Red Dawn. That was a great Yeah. One. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so do you want to do social media credentials? Yes, we should. Okay, Dave, why don't you start with the with the main the main '80s reboot? '80s reboot Overdrive is on Facebook. That's uh, facebook dot com slash '80s reboot. Twitter is at '80s reboot. We're on Tumblr, which is '80s reboot dot tumblr dot com. And don't forget to shoot us an email. That's 80sreboot at gmail.com. Um, and also don't forget, rate and review on iTunes. Yes, please rate and review us. It, it helps. It's awesome. Yes. We love to hear the feedback, too. So uh, you can find me at 80s Auto Reverse. And also that's on Twitter and on Facebook at Mixtape Auto Reverse. Uh, 80s mixtape auto reverse, sorry. And then at Scott's Eye also. And Rose, how about you? I am at 80s Music Girl on Twitter, 80s Music Girl on Facebook, and 80s Music Girl on Instagram. Cool. Well, Dave, uh, thanks thanks for letting me run this one. No, it, it you know, I, 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 I totally enjoyed, uh, you know, just uh, sitting in the, uh, I don't know if I was shotgun or if I was in the back seat. Um, but, uh, it was cool. I was in the back seat. All right, cool. Awesome. (laughs) So Rose was riding shotgun on this one. It was really cool. So we're going to, we're going to have Rose, uh, lead the next one. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Make it somebody good though. Why don't we let you pick who you want? Well, we got that sounded terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I want to do somebody good. Yeah. Well, we've got I'll this pick, whole outsiders thing going Matt. on, so I will pick my own. There, Matt Dillon's out there. I know. Patrick Swayze. I don't know. We already did Emilio, so yeah, kind of two bit. Yep. Yeah. Are we still rolling? Uh, yeah, we're we still done? rolling, but I'm gonna say goodbye now. We can say okay. thank you for joining us here again on '80s Reboot Overdrive. You guys have a wonderful evening. Good night. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. Pony boy, I asked the nurse to give you this book so you could finish it. It's worth saving those little kids. Their lives are worth more than mine. They have more to live for. Tell Dally I think it's worth it. I'm gonna miss you guys. I've been thinking about it in that poem, that guy that wrote it. He meant your gold when you're a kid, like green. When you're a kid, everything's new dawn like the way you dig sunsets pony that's gold keep it that way it's a good way to be i want you to ask dally to look at one i don't think he's ever seen a sunset there's still lots of good in the world tell dally i don't think he knows your buddy johnny stepped out into the bright sunlight.